Okay, we're going to go over a problem tonight that um, I posted in the study group most of you have been incinerated on, and I think it's important. So let's, let's have a look at what we have here. Now, um, this is a tough question, but as you can see, the only point of chorality is where I put this big black dot. And this here is a wedge. I actually had a kid today in study group said she, to me she couldn't see it. It's bigger than the nose of my face. All right, at any rate, at any rate, this is a wedge. So the first thing I do, I want to get the configuration here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to here, and I'm going to superimpose the black dot as this carbon. Coming off it is the NH2 group. The invisible group is an H. Then you have this carbon and this carbon. Now, we all know that nitrogen beats carbons. So that's one, and hydrogen is four. Since number four is a dash, we're in the proper position. Now the question is, what happens in the case of a tie? And, and I admit, this is a little bit hard, but if you can do this one, the DAT is gonna be a piece of cake. What I would do is I would look at this carbon and look at the three things that are coming off it. Well, there's an O and an O, but if it's a double bond O, you count it twice. So you can consider coming off that O is three friends. O, O, and O. That's pretty easy. Now, if you look at this carbon, what's the three groups coming off it? You have an S, an H, and an H. I call this my game of poker. So what we're gonna do is when we play the game of poker, the first high card wins. So if you look at the deal, the minute you see an S versus an O, S beats an O, that's the high card. So therefore, that carbon is more valuable. So therefore, that's two and that's three. So you come around, and as you can see, the stereochemistry is an R. If anyone is just curious how you would name such a compound, I want you to go in tomorrow to your class in, in school and ask your professors, and I want you to watch what happens. But let me show you how to name it. This is beyond the scope of the deck, but if anybody's out there, you're just dying. See, how would, how would I name such a compound? The first thing I did is one, two, and three, and then just think of this as one big substituent. If this group wasn't here, it would be an R, and then you would have the two amino propanoic acid. And that would be easy, but as you can see, what I would do is say R, because we, we found it was an R, two amino, and then this group, well, if you look at the number of carbons, one, two, three, it's propyl, and then off of the third position is a hydroxy. So putting it all together, it would be R2-amino-3, 3-hydroxypropyl sulfonyl, sulfonyl because of the S, propanoic acid. Obviously, a name like R2-amino-3, 3-hydroxypropyl sulfonyl, propanoic acid is way beyond the scope of the DAT and even PhD stuff. But the bottom line is, you should be able to tell me, is it an R? This particular um, um, amino acid derivative is from the amino acid you should recognize um, called cysteine, cysteine. So this is a cysteine derivative. All right, the bottom line is you should be able to now do RNS on any case. When you go to the destroyer book, the questions will be a piece of cake. All right, that's it, bye. And students, uh, join our Instagram, orgoman.destroyer. All right. And we'll see you there. Bye-bye.